Hello, and thanks for tuning in for today's devotion. Our verse is 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit is so important, so wonderful, and yet so misunderstood. Some seem to think that the Holy Spirit's main work among us is to make us feel excited and amazed and to keep church from becoming boring. They relegate him to the role of a cheerleader. Others seem to think it's enough to have Father and Son, Creator and Redeemer. They seem to forget entirely about the work of the Holy Spirit. Today and in our next few devotions, we will look at a hymn that refuses to let the Holy Spirit be misunderstood or forgotten because, as indicated in the title, he is truly God and Lord. In the hymn, Come Holy Ghost, God and Lord, we pray to the Holy Spirit and we pray for believers. Today's devotion looks especially at stanza one of that hymn, which we'll use as a prayer at the end of our devotion. Believers need prayers. Some may think we should save our prayers for unbelievers because we believers have already been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We've already been brought to saving faith. It may seem like believers don't need help anymore. But a believer known as the Apostle Paul would disagree. He's the one who described the life of a believer by saying, The good I want to do, I do not do. No, the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. If it ever seems like we believers don't need help with our faith, we need to remember that the sinful nature is a restless evil still clinging to each believer's mind and heart, so that in our mind we forget that we are God's children, and so that in our heart we feel either like we don't need him or that he doesn't want us. If you think that once you're a believer, you don't need help with your faith anymore, that's like thinking that once you've eaten, you don't need to eat anymore, or that once you've bathed, you don't need to bathe anymore. In this life, we believers are still sinners. We need help. We need help desperately. And we need help daily. In stanza one of our hymn, we pray that the Holy Spirit pour out his graces on each believer's mind and on each believer's heart. This is a big prayer. It's hard enough to change your behavior, to replace bad habits with good habits. It's far more difficult to experience a change of mind or a change of heart because this gets to the core of who you are. And then, when you consider that the change we're seeking is a change from sin and guilt to forgiveness and love, now you're in the realm of the impossible. Yet that's what we're asking the Holy Spirit to do in this hymn. Pour out your graces on each believer's mind and heart. Your fervent love to them impart. In other words, dear Holy Spirit, change minds and hearts completely so that they aren't fueled any longer by sin and guilt, but that they're fueled entirely by the forgiveness Jesus won for us on the cross. It's good for us to remember what a big thing this is to pray for, so that we can appreciate all the more that the Holy Spirit regularly answers this prayer for us. As you know, he does this through something that seems small. The means of grace is the gospel message packaged for us and delivered to us on the pages of Scripture and in the sacraments of holy baptism and holy communion. The message that Jesus paid for our sins might not seem like an earth-shattering message, but the Holy Spirit wields this message like the double-edged sword that it is. With it, he divides joints and marrow and cuts to the heart. He takes the work Jesus did on his cross, and he applies it to each believer one at a time. Through the gospel message and word and sacrament, the Spirit fills and fuels us with the forgiveness and the fervent love of Jesus so that being so loved by God, we can love others in our minds, from the hearts, from our core. And as wonderful as that is, the prayer of stanza one has an even bigger picture in mind. What starts as a prayer for each believer becomes a prayer for all believers together, for the entire holy Christian church on earth. Let's talk about a big prayer. Think of the strife and animosity that can even happen in a single congregation. And then think past that congregation to every congregation, 
Think of all the enemies working against the church, both those enemies who attack blatantly from outside the church and those false teachers deceiving from within. Think of the stark differences there are between Christian denominations, including the denomination known as non-denominational. Think of what a big thing it is to pray for the Holy Spirit to unite us. When we say this, we're praying that this resolution happen right now. We are praying that the Holy Spirit protect persecuted believers from the enemies who hate them, and that the Holy Spirit restore those who have been deceived to a right understanding of what God's Word says. We're praying that the Holy Spirit uses the light of God's Word to chase away the darkness of persecution and falsehood. Even now, the Holy Spirit answers this prayer. There are believers right now who are being strengthened by the gospel to withstand the attacks of the devil, the world, and the flesh, and we're holding firmly to God's saving word. You're one of them, and you are already connected to many more throughout the world who are being strengthened in just the same way. There is a holy Christian church in this world which crosses denominational lines and is made up of believers of every land and tongue, all who confess saving faith in Jesus. We can't see who is in this church because we can't read hearts, but it's there. And it is the Holy Spirit working through God's word and sacraments who unites us. And when we pray for the unity of the church, we're also praying for the day to come when this united church is able actually to see one another and to gather together and with one voice to praise our Lord and God with alleluias for all eternity. Count on it that the Holy Spirit will answer this prayer too. He has already promised that he will. Fellow believer, you will be there to see it. In the meantime, here is grace for your mind and your heart. You are forgiven in Jesus, loved by God, counseled and comforted by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit works on each believer, including you. The Holy Spirit is at work in the whole church, and that's you too. So let your heart and mind be what God has remade it to be through faith full of confidence, not worried about your life, full of praise to God in your words and in all you do. Let's pray. Come, Holy Ghost, God and Lord, may all your graces be outpoured on each believer's mind and heart, your fervent love to them impart. Lord, by the brightness of your light, in holy faith your church unite from every land and every tongue, this to your praise, O Lord our God, be sung. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. We'll see you next time.